What is good everybody, welcome to a pull-up show, my name is BJ Matthews, aka B Jizzle, before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull-Up Basketball Podcast, like, share, subscribe, all of our YouTube videos by hitting that notification bell by the subscribe button, as well as our cash app, dollar sign BJ Matthews, again, dollar sign BJ Matthews, our PayPal, Broderick Masters, B-R-O-D-R-I-C-K Masters, I will put the link into the description box after this video is completed, so let's get it popping. All right, so we got another good show for y'all today. Y'all to excuse me, I'm actually driving right now. I don't want to look at the road or look at the camera too much. I'm be looking more at the road, um, but I want to kind of get on here and kind of get some time to talk to y'all about um, this subject I got for you guys because you guys know um, this is a Clipper channel for the most part, but we do talk about the NBA as well as you know me being a basketball player myself. I love to talk about basketball and different teams and stuff like that, and I love the subscribers that come on here on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly, whatever you may call it, and they give their takes. So I gotta give a lot of credit to Dominique Brown, who's one of my subscribers from the uh, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. He's you know, a regular on our show, on live shows. You know, he talked about uh, our show yesterday. He brought some very good points. Um, and I gotta give him credit. I'm gonna tag him in this video as well to kind of, you know, give him that exposure. But he was talking about his team is the Sixers, so they played the Nuggets a couple of days ago where MB went off like 47 points, 18 rebounds, um, and they won by leaps, I think five points. Um, and the points he, he was trying to, you know, make of, of, yet, of us yesterday was basically because the Clippers been struggling with the Nuggets for quite some time. Um, he said he found a way to beat the Nuggets. Now, the things he named, I pretty much knew about 90% of them, but there were a couple of things he picked out that I did not catch right away because, you know, you're so into, like, you know, your team, you may think, okay, well, you may miss a couple of things. And he was able to somewhat come with, a, like, an actual, um, a, come with an actual plan to beat this team. So I want to kind of go through what he said, also what I was what I was thinking in my head because the Clippers, the Nuggets was having the Clippers number the last, you know, I don't know how many years, last two, three seasons, the bubble. And we just have not been able to have the upper hand on this team. And um, I know a lot of Clipper fans are trying to, you know, they're trying to figure out what is the way to beat this team, the Nuggets, because they're going to probably, we're going to have to probably see them in the playoffs. Now, of course, you look at the things like the Clippers saying, well, you know, the Kawhi and Pitch, you have to play better and, you know, all this stuff, which is casually, but you have to come up with a set plan to beat this team because it's not about what you do. It's about can you stop it? And obviously, we ain't been able to stop the Denver Nuggets uh, that have been doing it to us. So I'm going to go through some things about the way we can beat the Nuggets. And um, if y'all got any suggestions, make sure y'all put in the comment section. So let's go. All right. So obviously, and I talked about this in my last video about, about a few days ago, about three, four days ago, about how you can beat each team in the Western Conference. And I said the Clippers kryptonite is the Denver Nuggets. And I said that styles make fights, right? There's teams out there who are not as ranked high as the Clippers, but they seem to play better against the Nuggets, like the Lakers, the, um, the, the uh, who else? The Lakers, the, the uh, Warriors. Teams are not highly ranked higher than the Clippers, but they seem to have a better head-to-head -head matchup against them. That's a reason it's not unusual. Where the Nuggets are strong at, we're pretty weak. So how do we change that? Well, let's look at some of the strength the Nuggets has. Their biggest thing is their offense. Now, who does their offense run through? Nikola Jokic, as I said before. Nikola Jokic, without him, their offense pretty much suffers. He is the vital point. He's the focal point of their offense. Without him, they do not, you know, they do not mesh. You know what I'm saying? As I'm watching the Nuggets, without him, he, he sets all of his guys up from Aaron Gordon to Jamal Murray to Michael Porter Jr. to Bones Highland to KCP to uh, Bruce Brown to, you know what I'm saying, whoever's on the court, he sets them all up to get better shots. Last year, you've seen it. The Nuggets were still a playoff team, even though they had injuries with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., right? So that just goes to show you how important he is on this team. Now, here's the thing about us. How do we stop Nikola Jokic? Okay, well, if you guys recall last year, there was a game against the uh, Nuggets where we actually came back from, I think, 24 points at home. And what I saw... And I actually mentioned this a long time ago. I said that Nicholas Batum was the reason why we won that game. Because I saw in the fourth quarter that what he, they were doing was Nicholas Batum was guarding Jokic in the post and fronting him. Nicholas Batum has long arms. Um, he's, he's pretty long for his size. He has, you know, good reach and all that stuff. 
which it can bother Jokic because Jokic is not a great athlete, right? And also Batum's a smart defender. So that kind of goes against what Jokic can do well, right? So all I feel like they need to do is put Batum on him to start off the game and possibly to switch him out, get like, I would say Kawhi, just because Kawhi's just an all-around great defender to kind of keep uh, keep uh, Jokic working, right? People don't people say put Zubak on him. Well, I think Zubak, the problem is, is that when you put Zubak on Jokic, that's just a mismatch. I mean, I saw that last year when Jokic was playing against uh, Zubak, and I think he had like 40-some points. Can't stop him. You know, they, they're too slow to stop him, and they're not, as, they're not smart enough to stop him. So I think Nicholas Batum is the way we can start off the game to cut off the head of the stake with Jokic and also follow it by Kawhi. Um, Aaron Gordon has been the second guy who's been killing us, and he's been killing us more in the post. Now, Aaron Gordon's not the best player on the league. He's not even the second best player on the team, but he's been the second best impactful player for them and the second biggest problem for us when we face him. So we need to put a guy on Aaron Gordon to actually slow him down the pace and in the post and that player to me is a Vizca Zubak, surprisingly. Now, here's the deal. I just said Zubak can barely guard Jokic, but the thing about, you got to look at how Aaron Gordon plays. He plays in the post. So you have to put somebody on him who's strong enough, who's long enough, who's big enough, who can kind of throw his weight around to bother Aaron Gordon. I think Zubak is that guy. I mean, I think even with Kawhi, Kawhi has trouble with Gordon in the post, Aaron Gordon. So... I would say you put Zubak in that post to somewhat just pull out Aaron Gordon and make him shoot jump shots. And if he's taking jump shots all day, I will live with that and live with the results because he's just been getting what he wants inside the post and it's really been killing our momentum and it's like really been, you know what I'm saying, uh, sucking the life out of our offense. That was the point that um, Dominique brought up that I did not realize right off the bat because I'm thinking, like, how do we stop Aaron Gordon? And he said, put Zubak on him because he's killing in the post. I was like, all right, that makes sense. Um, Michael Porter Jr. is another guy. Um, here's the thing about MPJ. I'm not too concerned about him. I think he's more of a streaky scorer, meaning there's games he'll go off and give you 20 plus in this game. So he'll probably get eight or 10. He's just that type of player. He's a jump shooter. So your shot is not always going to be falling. But he, nonetheless, he is six foot ten. He is, you know, talented. So how do you put, how do you stop MPJ? Well, like I said, make him shoot jump shots because he's going to, you know, take a lot of shots. And so you have to put a guy on him who's crafty and who has quick hands and, you know what I'm saying, good athleticism with him. I think that guy is um, is Paul George and Robert Covington. Now, here's the thing about Paul George. Well, I'm saying, I'm sorry, Kawhi Leonard. Put Kawhi Leonard on Michael Porter Jr. and then uh, followed up with Robert Covington. Now, here's the reason why I say Kawhi Leonard, because Kawhi Leonard is going to be guarding the small forward anyway. So I would say start him off with Michael Porter Jr. to demoralize him and make him uh, have to work. And then follow up with Robert Covington, who has quick hands, who's a smart defender, who's a crafty defender. Now it's going to be up to Ty Lue to play him. Y'all know Ty Lue has been having trouble playing with you know certain guys, and Roko's been one of them. So he's got to get out of his his own way and actually play this man the minutes that he needs to play him if they want to have a chance to beat the Denver Nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Because we have the team to beat them. We have the 3D guys to beat them. But I noticed with Ty Lue, he's not playing all of his weapons. And I'm hoping it's because he's trying to keep that as a secret for the playoffs. But that's what he has to do, right? So play Robert Covington, uh, Kawhi Leonard to guard, uh, guard Michael Porter Jr. start the game off. And that's going to take him out the game. And then finally, Jamal Murray, who's been um, somebody who has destroyed us, destroyed us in the bubble. And he's been the guy who's been, you know, the problem for us you know, since he's been back, right? And um, here's the thing about Jamal, bro. Jamal Murray, he's a six foot four, six foot five guard who can score. He's, he's pretty athletic, even though with the ACL injury, but he can shoot, right? And I know it's the Clippers a lot of times, the problem that we run into, we keep switching, we keep going under, under screens. Why are we continuously going on the streams when we have guys who are long enough to stick with Jamal Murray and athletic enough, right? So I say the person who needs to be started up on him is Paul George. And I mean Paul George needs to be started on him and hounding the hell out of him. You know what I'm saying? He's being six foot nine, six foot ten, or six foot nine. He can really bother Jamal Murray. But now here's the catch though. We've been starting Paul George at the point guard because Terrence Mann's been starting with him. And I think that's actually something that we need to stop doing. 
because when you watch Terrence Mann play against the Nuggets, he doesn't really have much of an impact. I've said this many, many times. I keep saying this. Step, Terrence Mann is not a starter. That's no disrespect to him, but I think he'd be more serviceable for us on the bench, right? Because he doesn't really move the needle. In a game against the Nuggets, you're going to have to be able to score the ball. And if you're only giving you eight to ten points and they're like in garbage time and stuff like that, and you're not taking a lot of shots, not being aggressive on the offensive end, and you're not stopping Jamal Murray on the defensive end, then it's kind of like a double negative. So I would say put Paul George to start off on Jamal Murray to bother him and to jump screens. And then I would say, you know what I'm saying, start the game with Paul George playing the two. So who should be playing the one? Now, this is where I'm going to go to the offensive side of the ball because Denver is a strong offensive team. Y'all notice they don't really have much of a defense. Their offense is their defense, meaning that they score – and that's how they demoralize you on the other end when you don't really want to play great defense because they just keep hitting threes. Jokic making great passes and skip passes and just backdoor. And it's just destroying their, their the, uh, the focus of the Clippers on defense. So that demoralizes you on the other end. So you have to be able to score with Denver and keep the pressure going. And this is why I say John Wall should be either starting or playing towards the end of the game. Right? Now, people keep saying, Wall, there's people in the Clipper Nation that want Wall gone. I'm telling you, these guys are looking at the game the wrong way. If you go back and look at the games that John Wall played against Denver, you guys would notice that the Denver Nuggets didn't have an answer for him. That's where he had his, his monster dunk the last game they played because they could not keep up with his speed. They could not keep up with his playmaking. If you play John Wall heavy minutes against the Denver Nuggets with the right pieces around him, then it's gonna be he's going to be big in that series. Right? And I would say... Just put John Wall, I don't know who the off guard is for the Denver Nuggets, just let him guard the off guard on the uh, Denver Nuggets, and that way you have your starting five. Right? So it's going to come down to those instances, and, and then the bottom line is at the end of the day, though, we can do all that, but the way we're going to win this series and close out is Kawhi and PG have to be the two best players on the court. That means they have to show up Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. They have to basically let them know that you're not on our level, you can't compete with us, and we're going to continuously be a dominant force out here. You know, over the last few meetings, it's been Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic being better than Kawhi and Paul George. And to me, that's just unacceptable. Kawhi and Paul George should be the two best players on the on the court when they face this uh, this dynamic duo. All right? But um, those are my instances, man. If you guys have any questions or any comments, I'm free to listen. And um, this is an informational channel. So definitely, you know what I'm saying? Lock in, pull up C, pull up chip, pull up. Peace. Out of here like swim well.